Hello and welcome. Today we're going to look at the reactivity series and link that with metal extraction. So let's start off with the reactivity series. We have a metal called potassium and this is a very reactive metal. We can actually take a look and see how that reacts in water. So here's a beaker of water. We put in some potassium and you can see straight away sparks fly and it catches fire. That's a very vigorous reaction. Potassium is a very reactive metal, so it goes right at the top of our reactivity series of metals. So let's look at the other metals. A metal that's slightly less reactive is sodium, and one below that is a metal called lithium. We can take a look at the reaction of lithium in water as well. So there's our beaker of water, and you can see it floats on the top, fizzes, shoots around the surface a little bit, and that's quite a vigorous reaction as well. Not as strong or vigorous a reaction as with potassium, but it's still quite a strong reaction for something just to be placed in water and do that, especially a metal. So lithium is there on our list of reactivity series of metals. The next one down we can look at is calcium, and then after calcium we have magnesium, and then we can continue with the list, add a few on there, add a few more on there. We've got aluminium and then a whole bunch of other metals. So the key thing about this is, is the reactivity series of metals. It's the most reactive at the top and the least reactive at the bottom. So gold is the least reactive in this list. It's also quite useful to have one more element in here. And that element is carbon. Now carbon is not a metal but it can fit in the list, in this list, between aluminium and zinc. So it's less reactive than aluminium, more reactive than zinc. So how is this information useful? Well, let's have a look at metal extraction. Let's have a look at metal extraction. Metals are extracted from something called ores. Ores are rocks that contain metal compounds. One example of a metal compound in an ore is iron oxide. Iron ore contains iron oxide. Iron ore is dug from the ground and it contains iron oxide. The iron can be extracted from the iron oxide with a chemical reaction. So how is this done? We dig up the ore, we remove the iron oxide from it, we crush it, and we also get some carbon that we talked about in the last slide. We can react the carbon, the crushed carbon, with the crushed iron oxide. We can mix them together first, and then we can cause a reaction by heating strongly. And what actually happens is we get the formation of the metal iron. So there's some iron produced in that reaction. So there's our iron formed by that reaction. So we can write this down as a word equation to see what's happening. Iron oxide plus carbon gives iron plus carbon dioxide. This is how we extract the iron from iron oxide by reacting it with carbon. So we can just have a quick look to see how that actually happens. We've got our iron oxide and our carbon, but because the carbon is more reactive than the iron, what it does is it takes the oxide away from the iron oxide and makes carbon dioxide. And the reason it does that, the reason it does that is because it's more reactive than the iron, so it removes the oxygen from the iron. So this is how we have got our word equation for this reaction. Iron oxide plus carbon gives iron plus carbon dioxide. If we add our reactivity series back again, we can see that the metals that are below carbon in this list these ones here, these metals can be extracted from their oxides by heating with carbon. So we can extract these metals from their oxides by heating with carbon because the carbon is more reactive than these metals. Let's take a look at another example, zinc oxide plus carbon. What's going to happen here? Well, if we look, there's carbon on our reactivity series and zinc is below it, so carbon is more reactive. That means the carbon will remove the oxide, the oxygen, 
from the zinc oxide. So we have zinc plus carbon dioxide. One more example, we can look at copper oxide plus carbon. And again, you can see the carbon is much more reactive than the copper. So we'll end up with copper and also in this case, carbon dioxide, copper plus carbon dioxide. What happens if we try to react, react something like aluminium oxide with carbon? Well, aluminium is above carbon in our reactivity series, so it's more reactive than the carbon. There's our aluminium above carbon. And so the carbon will not be able to remove the oxide, the oxygen, from aluminium oxide. So there is no reaction. One more example. We can take a look at magnesium oxide and carbon. And again, you can see the magnesium is above carbon in the reactivity series. So again, there's going to be no reaction because the magnesium is more reactive than carbon. We cannot extract magnesium from its oxide using this method. Those two metals, we have to use a different method to extract them. It's worth mentioning here also that if you look near the bottom of the reactivity series, we've got gold and silver. These don't need to be extracted from oxides because they are so unreactive that when you find them in nature, when you find them, you find them as the metal. No chemical reaction is required to extract them. So that's it for our video today, reactivity series, the reactivity series and metal extraction. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.